Hello everyone, as we are back in the discrete mathematics course and we are going to continue this uh, set theory part 2. In the previous part we have seen very basic definitions and properties of set. Today we are going to examine various laws and identities that are part of the set. Last time we stopped with the subset. Let us begin from where we left, right there, the proper subset. Well, let us use Venn diagram to represent a proper subset. And Venn diagram is very strong tool and very easy for us to grasp the exact meaning because it can be expressed by means of a pictorial representation that is easy for us to understand. Okay, coming here you have this universe and within this universe you have two sets. One is set R and then within this set R you have set S. Yes, you can rightly say that S is a proper set of subset of R because R has something that S does not have and R has all the elements that S has. Exactly. So, let us uh, see more properties here. Uh, set cardinality. So, what is the cardinality of a set? Cardinality of a set is the number of elements in a set. It is so simple. So, if you are asked to find what is the cardinality of a set, you have just have to say how much elements are there and you represent by means of this symbol which looks like absolute value of A. Well, let us see here. Let R equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then the card cardinality of R is 5. Here is the cardinality of uh, empty set is 0 because it does not contain element. So, here we have uh, a set S yes, which has null set as an element and uh, a set that has a character A as an element and set B, a uh, set that has a B as an element and set that has A comma B as an element. So, the cardinality of S is 4. Can you try to comprehend what is behind this logic? Yes, this, this is the same notions used for vector length in geometry. A set with one element is sometimes called a singleton set. Let us uh, see more on this topic. Uh, the next one is called the power set. So, at times you will be asked to find what is the cardinality and what is the power of a set. Well, given a set S, say it has two elements 0 and 1, what are the possible subsets of S? We know that empty set is subset of all set. So, there are you have 0, you have 1, you have 1 0. So, you can see the power set of S which you can write, write it as P of S is a set of all possible subsets. So, in this example we have the empty set which is subset of all, sub, all sets. So, empty set is a part of the set S and uh, you can also create a set with the element 0 and a set with the element 1 and a set with element 0 and 1. So, with this you have the power of the set S is 4 and cardinality, cardinality of the set is 2. There is an interesting fact from this power set. Uh, you can see we have the set T which has 3 elements 0, 1 and 2. So, when we try to 
see what is the power of this set T, you have the empty set and uh, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 0, 2, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. Remember that we are not repeating anything, we do not want to have a duplicate because set theory does not allow us to use a duplicate element. And basically you can also find there is a relation here, the cardinality of this set is 3 which is the number of elements and the power of the set T is 8. Do you find a relation there? Yes, you can see the power of the empty set because empty set has one element which, which is the empty set and you know cardinality is 0 and the power is 1. So, it is like saying if a set has n elements then the power set will be 2 power n. For example, for the empty set it is does not you can see what happens to the empty set, 2 power 0 is 1. For the set we have seen here T, 2 power 3 is 8. Well, that is one of the ways in which you can cross examine whether you got the right power. Tuples, in, an, in two dimensional space uh, it, it is a x y pair of numbers to specify a location. It is like a coordinate you can see here in x y plane we have 2 comma 3 there. So, in 3 dimensional plane 1 2 3 is not as same as 3 to 1 space, uh, it is like x y z triple of numbers. So, that in, with regards to 3 dimensional sp space uh, we need to look at the locations there and for n dimensional space it is n tuple of numbers. So, two dimensional space uses pairs or two tuples, three dimensional space uses triples or three tuples and these tuples are ordered unlike sets. Tuples that is one thing that does not look like a set because we are fully discussing about the parts of set and other things. But as far as tuples are concerned, it should be ordered. When it, when it says it should be ordered, if you have a set, for example, if you have a set like 1, 2, 3, 4, and uh, if you say that this set is equal to 1, 2, 4, 3, well, it is okay for the normal set. But as far as tuples are concerned, you can see that 1 equals 1, 2 equals 2, 3 it should be this is where we get the problem. So, we have this 2 part where the order is not the same. Therefore, we could say that this cannot be a part of tuples. Therefore, tuples should have the same elements. Let me give you another example that might uh, give you some more hint. Let us say if you have a set like 3 and uh, say you have minus 2 the whole square and say 1 by 2 and I say that this is equal to say let us say root 9 and 4 and you can say 3 by 6. Yes, this is going to be a tuple. You can say that 3 is equal to root 9 and minus 2 the whole square is equal to 4 as well as 1 by 2 is equal to 3 by 6. So, that is the ordered set. A tuples are ordered unlike sets. Just for your information, I am giving this examples here. So, let us uh, see more on this Cartesian product. A Cartesian product is a set of all ordered two tuples where each 
part is from a given set denoted by A cross B and uses the parenthesis not curly braces. For example, 2D is like two dimensional Cartesian coordinates or the set of ordered pairs Z cross Z. We know Z is the set of all integers and this is all possible coordinates of 2D space. Given A equals A comma B and B equals 1 comma 0 comma 1. So, what is their Cartesian product? We are trying to cross between A and B. So, C that is Cartesian product of A cross B is A comma 0, A comma 1, B comma 0, B comma 1. So, we have a ordered set of pairs forming here. Let us note more on this Cartesian product. So, they have only two parts in this example. So, we will see here uh, A cross B here for all A comma B such that A is an element of set A and B is an element of set B. With this all possible grades in this class will be the Cartesian product of set S and all possible students in this class and the set G for all possible grades. So, you have two sets here, one is set of students in the class and set of grades that are possibly given to these students. So, let us say D equals A comma Alice, it is Alice comma A, Alice comma B, Alice comma C, Bob comma A, Bob comma B, Bob comma C, Chris comma A, Chris comma B, Chris comma C. So, these are all possible combinations of this Cartesian products that you can come up with, but the final grade would be the subset of this all possible combination maybe like Alice comma C, Bob comma B, Chris comma A. Such a subset of Cartesian product is called a relation. So, we will talk about this relations later on in one of our lectures. More on the Cartesian product, uh, there can be Cartesian product on more than two sets like 3 co 3D coordinates is an element from the Cartesian product of Z times uh, Z times Z, it is in other words Z cross Z cross Z, a 3 dimensional 3 coordinates we have 3D coordinates. So, we are going to see some pictorial representation of uh, the properties of sets in terms of uh, Cartesian combinations. So, let us say here pick any three primary colors we have like say blue, green and red and then a triangle shows the mixable color range or the set of colors and here we have other set which represented by means of kind of inverted triangle. Let us say this uh, monitor uh, is represented by M as set M and printer that is represented by set P and these are the two triangles, one is the proper one and the other one is the inverted triangle. So, with this in mind, let us uh, go up to this first operation, it is called a union operation of a set. Union of a set contains all elements in either set. So, we have two sets here that is M and P. So, union of M and P is combining all elements of M and all elements of P. So, it is like uh, it is we just use the symbol U to represent the union of two sets and that is M union P, C is M union P. In simple terms still you might have already studied if a set A contains 1, 2, 3 and if set B contains 4, 5, 6, A union B would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yet it contains all elements in both the sets. So, here is another representation, the Venn diagram representation A union B, 
yes all elements of A and all elements of B are put together that is why we call it as union of all elements. So, you have formal definition here A union B for all X such that X is an element of A or X can be element of B. So, here is more definitions uh, as I told you earlier if a set has 1, 2, 3 and another set has 3, 4, 5 combining both 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 or in fact, we have 1, 2, 3 and 3, 4, 5. So, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and the other, other example you can see New York, Washington union with 3 comma 4. So, we have New York, Washington 3 and 4 and then you have 1 comma 2 union with the empty set. So, that is 1 comma 2. So, here is a few properties this might come in handy and later stage. So, properties of union operations you have first we have this uh, identity law A union with the empty set is A, A union with the universal set is the universal set itself that is the domination law, A union with A is A that is idempotent law, A union with B equals B union with A that is commutative law. A union B union C equals A union B union C that is associative law. Yes, the algebraic and the Boolean logics we also came across such laws, but it also applies to the sets here. Now, let us uh, talk about the other operation that is intersection of sets intersection. What is an intersection? Intersection of a set contains all elements in both sets. In other words, it contains the elements that are common to both sets. So, we have a set M and set P. So, things that are common is just found in between those two triangles there. So, that is represented by means of this symbol looks like N for intersection C equals M intersection P. So, for our clearer understanding we can see the common elements that are in A as well as in B is the intersection A intersection B. And here is more definition a formal definition of intersection of two sets A intersection B equals for all X such that X is an element of A and X is an element of B the and logic right the Boolean logics and and logics all things come in handy, but here is things the here is with respect to sets. So, I get I guess you get the right sense here. So, 1, 2, 3 intersection 3, 4, 5. So, we have only 3 as the common element between these two sets. So, that is the A I mean when you intersect these two elements you have only 3. New York Washington intersect with 3 comma 4 that is empty because the we do not have any common elements there yeah right no elements is common 1 comma 2 intersection with the empty set no common elements. So, that is empty set any set intersection with an empty set yields the empty set that is a simple property. And here is the some of the laws that you can learn A intersection union is A, A intersection with the empty set is the empty set that is the domination law, A intersection with any A is A identical law, A intersection with B equals B intersection with A that is commutative law, A intersection B intersection C equals A intersection B intersection C that is associative law. So, more on this uh, we have the disjoint set as the picture indicates you have two triangles, but they are quite apart they have no common elements. So, yeah that is the property of a disjoint set. Uh, two sets are disjoint if they have no elements that are common right here. Formally two sets are disjoint if their intersection is empty set that makes sense because for an intersection you have only the common elements we take for the intersection. Another example the set of even numbers and the set of odd numbers they are completely different they are disjoint set. 
here is the pictorial representation of a disjoint set, uh, two distinct A and B being uh, pictorially represented here. And a formal definition of disjoint sets, two sets are disjoint if their intersections is empty. So, you can say for example, 1, 2, 3 and 3, 4, 5 are not disjoint, because we have 3 as the common element. New York, Washington and uh, 3 comma 4 are disjoint, because they do not have any common elements. Then comes this 1 comma 2 and uh, the empty set are disjoint, they do not have a common element. The intersection is an empty set, that is the logic that we have to use for the disjoint set. Empty set and empty set is our disjoint set as well, because the intersection yields the empty set, that is the logic as I told you before. And now, we will talk about the difference operator, a difference of two sets is the element in one set that are not in the other set. Element in one set that are not in the other set. Could you think of those stuff? The elements that are in one set that are not in the other set. Yes, we can see both sets here that are represented in colors, they have some parts say the difference we just simply represent by means of the minus sign c equals m minus p. And you can see for example, c is m minus p in which you had uh, taken the difference of the two sets that are not in the other. So, here this part that is in the color, these are the parts that are not in P, but are in M. So, we have we can also see vice versa that is C equals P minus M. Okay. So, that is uh, this part, these three small triangles there, these are the parts that are not in M, but are they are in P. I think there is some mismatch. So, these colors uh, comes in just ignore these parts, just ignore these things. Actually, we are focusing on this three elements. Here it is B minus A. So, we could say just take the part of B that are not in A. So, that is B minus A. And you can see A minus B, the part of A that is not in B. Difference operator formal definition here, A minus B equals for all X, X is an element of uh, such that x is an element of A and x is not an element of B. A minus B is similar to A intersection B complement. We will talk about the complement in the coming slides. 1, 2, 3, minus 3, 4, 5 is equals 1, comma 2, because this is A minus B and for B minus A, it would be different. I mean the first part set minus the second set, if you do the vice versa, your answer would be different. Again, New York, Washington minus 3 comma 4 equals New York, Washington. As I told you, if you switch, for example, 3 comma 4 minus New York and Washington, your answer would be 3 comma 4. 1 comma 2 minus the empty set is 1 comma 2. The difference of any, any set S yes, with the empty set will be the set itself. Let us talk about the symmetric operation here, symmetric difference. A symmetric difference of a set contains all elements in either set, but not both. All elements in either set, but not both. So, this is very similar uh, to one of the properties that we have seen earlier. So, you can see here, the, color, the shaded portions are the part in which we have all elements that are in both set P and M, but they are not in, they do not they don't have a common thing. So, you just eliminate the common part, but the remaining one you are including here. So, that is very similar to the XOR operation, if you could recall. So, we use a symbol similar to the XOR, 
m x or p. So, here is a formal definition of symmetric difference. We are using symbol similar to that of the cross that used for x or a symmetric difference with b is equal to a for all uh, for all x you hear for all x such that x is an element of a or x is an element of b and x is not an element of a intersection b that is the property. So, here you could also represent this whole stuff by means of a union b minus a intersection b gives the same results. For example, you have 1, 2, 3 and the symmetric difference with 3, 4, 5 that would be 1, 2, 4, 5. We are not taking the common element. New York, Washington symmetric difference with 3 comma 4. We have New York, Washington 3 and 4 because there is no common elements. 1 comma 2 symmetric difference with the empty set it is 1 comma 2. Symmetric difference of a set S yes, with the empty set will be the set S itself. Complement set it is one of the important property of a set. A complement of a set is all the elements that are not in set. For example, if you talk about set M here and M complement would be the things that are not part of M. Yes. So, difference is that. So, we just simply use the symbol for complement is we should have a bar here for a complement bar above the name. So, complement of M and we have the complement of P here. So, here is the Venn diagram for complement. So, this is A complement that is here and here is B complement. Just you have a bar simple above the name to represent us. So, the name A, A set A complement is you just have a bar above the name and B complement is here. Complements more information on the formal definition here A equals for all values of x such that x is not an element of A. So, x is not a part of A. So, that is about the complement set. So, the properties of complement sets we have double negation or uh, well we can relate this that of negation, but here double complement complementation law double complements is equal to the same set A. A union A is equals to the universal set that is complement law. That is uh, if he, here it comes like A intersection A union A union A complement is the universal set and A intersection the A complement is the empty set. Well, that is some of the properties of complement and uh, today in this part the second part we talked a lot about unions, intersections, in fact Cartesian products, tuples, complements, various properties as well as the definitions, rules and regulations that we have and uh, various ways in which uh, set can be used. We have seen various examples as well. So, there are a lot more to learn in set. So, until now we have going through well with the part 2 and I am looking forward to see you in the next part of set that is set part 3 where we will talk more about some of the applications of set and uh, some of the ways in which people are still looking ahead to see a lot of other research areas that are pertaining to the sets and let us see some simple problems uh, that you, you might be interested in in the sets. So, until we see in the next lecture have a good time and see you goodbye.